everyone. Welcome to Book Review by You. My name is Renee Edwards, and I'm the Program and Educational Services Director for Fairfax County Public Library. Please allow me to introduce our speaker. Janet McCreary is the author of two award-winning books, A Little Noble and A Little Wicked. Kirkus Reviews had this to say about A Little Wicked. The fast pace and suspense filled pages will keep younger teens engrossed while providing notable history lessons. A high stakes historical adventure full of emotional, social and political drama. Janet combines her passions for travel and history to create historical fiction adventures. She explores the United States, Scotland and other parts of Europe for inspiration and research as well as find her quest, as well as her quest to find the ultimate hot chocolate. I hope you answer the question of whether or not you found that ultimate hot chocolate, Janet. Welcome and thank you for being here this evening. Hi everybody, thanks for being here. I appreciate your time. So <clears throat> as Renee just said, I uh, am Janet McCurry. I write historical fiction adventures for people ages 10 and up. They're classified as middle grade, but anyone over the age of 10 can enjoy them, I assure you. <laughs> we have no age maximum for middle grade fiction. A lot of people really enjoy it. So we're gonna start out by playing with the chat function. Can anyone tell me whether or not they've ever reviewed a book? Yay, 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 yay. Okay, so hopefully we're gonna make that a little bit easier for you. We have a somewhat quick and easy way <laughs> to get the uh, <clears throat> reviews done a little bit faster. So when you hear book review, is this what you think of? This sort of long scholarly dissection of the plot and uh, elevated appreciation for character arc and uh, other pieces of context. This is what's called the professional review. This is a person who is required to reach a certain um, word count, they have other parameters that they have to pay attention to, and they are required to do so because they're paid to do it. We will not be doing this kind of review tonight. We are doing personal book reviews. In other words, book review by you. So what is a personal book review? It's a review that's written by someone who's not paid for it, and it's an honest review expressing what you thought of a book and really whether or not you think other people would like that book. So we're here to help out ourselves and other people. Now, why are we gonna do this if we're not getting paid for it, right? There has to be some reason for us to do this and spend our time on it. So there are lots of different kinds of rewards that come with reviewing books. The first one is the more reviews you write, the more suggestions you'll receive for other books for you to read, whether it's on a site or with friends or just random people who see it on the internet, if they say, oh, if you like this book because you like sci-fi, then you'll like this other book. And suddenly you have this huge to be read pile that you could never, ever, ever read in your entire existence. But the more you review, the more times people will tell you books that they think you'll like based on your review. Another reason to review is book people love other book people. And so you will build this community of people who like the same kinds of books that you do. And if you like all kinds of books, then you can have all kinds of communities. When you get into one of these book communities, you talk about books, but you talk about authors and you talk about the topics of the books. Maybe you just like books about gardening. So you're not even talking about books, but you're also talking about gardening, but you found those people through your books, through your book reviews. So the more book reviews you, you write, the more discussion groups you can find, and the more people who like the same things that you like, you'll be able to find. So why else do we write reviews? It gives you an accounting of what you read. So real talk here. Our memories are not as good as we think they are. At least mine isn't. And sometimes you get 20 pages into a book and you think to yourself, have I read this already? This is sounding familiar. And if it was something that I've read already, is it worth reading again? Or should I put it down and move on? If you have a review of that book in your log, then you know you've already read it and you're not wasting your time. 
especially if you didn't like it the first time around. <laughs> um, I have trouble when an author has a series of books, remembering which ones of the series that I've read. <laughs> so if I have a review of the ones that I've read, then I know what to move on to. So that one is a, is a real important one for me. Another good reason for writing reviews is that you're helping somebody. You're helping somebody find the next great book that they wanna read or the next great book that they wanna give as a gift to somebody else is say, perhaps you don't like to read science fiction, but you read reviews about people who do like science fiction, then you can give it to your friend who does like science fiction. And that's how a review is helpful to somebody else, whether they like what you read or not. I can read a book, um, <clears throat> I can read a review about a book that I don't like, about a topic that I don't like, because I know somebody else does, and I can share that with them. Does anybody have any other ideas as to why we would find it helpful to write book reviews? Are we getting? We do have a question. Okay, I can take that. Holly asks, do you think people should write reviews for books they only read a portion of and didn't like? Yes, and we can get to that a little in a little bit more detail and in uh, a couple more slides. But yes, I think that is valuable. It has value. Okay. Um, all right. If we don't have any other ideas, the last one I can come up with is you're helping out the author. As an author, I can tell you, <laughs> I very much like to see reviews of my book, and it's not just because the more reviews your book has the more likely it's gonna be recommended to somebody else, the more sales or takeouts from the library. Yes, it's good for an author's ego as well as their future as an author, but really what an author gains from reading a review about their work is whether or not they connected to their audience and in what way and what audience, with what audience did they connect? Was it what they intended? Are there unintended connections that the author didn't even see that that a review can bring to their attention. It's an important part that maybe uh, doesn't get thought of very much. Um, but as an author, it's very important that I read reviews, even ones that aren't entirely flattering in order to see where it went off the rails or where it connected. Um, so does anybody have any questions about why we write reviews? Anything coming through? No. Okay, great, we'll move on then. Okay, when should you write a review? This goes to was it Holly's question. So most review sites allow you to have a, um, a one to five rating system, right? So five is, I love this book. This is the best book ever, it changed my life. Everyone has to know about this book. So that's a fact. Definitely write that review. If it's a four or a three, you like the book, didn't change your life, but you liked it, then yes, definitely write the review. Um, if you dislike the book, even to the point where you didn't finish it, then you want to write the review to help other readers who the book might be a fit for. So I started reading this book and I couldn't get through all the whale blubber, let's say Moby Dick. I couldn't get through all of it. So somebody who that doesn't bother or someone who might enjoy that kind of description, this might be for you, but it wasn't for me. So that's a, that would be a two for me if I was rating it, that would be a two, I didn't get through it. Or if you didn't get through it because you just didn't like it at all, that's a one. And if it's a one, then I don't write a review. It, you put a one star for the rating so that you know that you read it and you move on with your life. <laughs> you don't need to carry that negativity with you. Just give it a one star so that you know that you read it and you move on with your life. Does that answer Holly's question? She said, yes, thank you. Excellent, great. Any other questions so far? Nope, we're good. Okay, great. So when you are reading a review, it's, it's good to think about what exactly it is that you're looking for. And I boil it down to three things. What kind of book is it? What makes this book special or different? And what kind of reader would like this book? 
So those are the three sentences that we're gonna write to write a review. So here we go. Fill in the blanks. What kind of book is it? So it's your sentence is an adjective, then noun, which is a synonym for story, set in a region in a time frame. So for adjective, you use something like artful, enjoyable, hair raising, informative. And for the noun, you use a synonym for the word story. If you're having trouble coming up with your own words for this, I made a Pinterest page, um, pinterest.com slash Janet McCurry, and the board is called Book Review by You. And you'll find these pins on there. So the one in blue are the different ways that you can describe a story. It's interesting, it's spellbinding, it's boring. And then on uh, the more taupe page uh, pin, you'll find synonyms for the word story. Everything from story down to storyline, exclusive, memoir, whatever it is. So you choose those two. So now you have an adjective and a noun for story, and then it's set in the region, whatever the region is. It could be space, it could be a country, it could be a city, it could be fictitious, it could be real, whatever the region, the setting is. And when is it? Is it taking place now? Is it taking place in the future? Did it take place in the past? Is it a known past? So the first sentence of this story, of the review for the story is, an enjoyable read set in dog-led Antarctica in the 1890s. And right away you've answered the question, what kind of book is this? How are we doing so far? Okay, if you have a story or a book in mind that you wanna be reviewing as we go through this, you can try and write that sentence right now and you can put it in the chat if you're brave enough to share it with us. We are kindly folk, we like books, we like reviews. So please, if you come up with a sentence, put it in the chat and we'd like to hear about it. So that's your first sentence. Remember we had three. We're gonna move on to the next, which is what makes this book special or different? You're gonna name a book of book elements. And again, I have a pin for that. These are book elements, character, plot, setting, point of view, style, theme, literary devices, conflict resolution, conflict resolution, or conflict resolution, depending on the book. Um, all of these are elements of the book that you might describe in the second sentence as to say what's special about it or what makes it different. That's the Pinterest uh, address on the side there. So you choose a book element, characters, description, plot twists, and the rest of the sentence is kept me, and then a verb or verb phrase. Did it engage you? Did it bore you? Did it, did it have you turning pages? Did it have you keep you wondering what would happen next? These are all the things that we can use to describe what makes the book special or different. So my second sentence is the constant twists kept me turning pages. I'm gonna give you a couple of few seconds there to catch up and write a second sentence or finish your first sentence and look at the slide for the second sentence. <laughs> Have you had any questions or shared reviews yet? Yes. Uh we have, uh, Lynn has created her first sentence. Um, she says, a mysterious tale set in the American West in the 70s. Perfect. Love it. Yay. <laughs> and then Ed asks, where are the reviews one writes being published or posted? Amazon, Goodreads, elsewhere? You're about six to eight slides ahead of me. <laughs> We're getting there. I promise. <laughs> That's it for now. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the third sentence. Okay. Right. Who would like this book? We're going to name an age group or just a group in general. So we're talking adults, teens, tweens, middle age, through adult, middle grade, through adult families, or again, on my Pinterest, you can find scientists, scholars, history buffs, romance lovers, horror story lovers, graphic novel fans, whatever it is, whatever group of people would like this kind of book, 
is the first part of the sentence, and then will, and then you make a connection. They'll relate to the characters. They'll be terrified in a wonderful way. They'll be introduced to new concepts if it's some sort of a nonfiction or a memoir or something, or good historical fiction, or be swept away by the description. So my third sentence is families will be swept away by the descriptions. Okay, don't forget to share your sentences. All right, and then Holly says, reading Where the Lost Wander by Anne Harmon, a riveting, engaging, and gorgeously written novel set in the American 1800s. Love it. <laughs> Love it, perfect. You've written your three sentences. Everyone's excited. Ta-da, here's the review. An enjoyable read set in Dogled Antarctica in the 1890s. The constant twists kept me turning pages. Families will be swept away by the descriptions. You've got a <clears throat> informative, entertaining, and thought-provoking review. And it only took you three sentences. That's all it takes. You can write dozens of them. When you're done with the book, you can write your review post it where you're going to post it, and you have your log. <laughs> but if you wrote them all exactly this way, it might get a little boring for you. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to toss in a little variety, mix it up. These are the same sentences. As you can see, the sentences that are in white is the first sentence, an enjoyable read. And then the second sentence I put in green, and the third sentence, uh, starting with families, I put in blue. And you can put them in any order and they still make sense as a paragraph. They still make sense as a review. So if you're reading all of your reviews at once, you're not gonna drive yourself crazy by reading the same thing over and over again. <laughs> you're gonna have this variety and mix it up for yourself. So that's a little, a little bit of variety for you and also for your readers. So now how about a book? that you really didn't like, the two star, the one that you're not excited about. How do we write that review? We're gonna use basically the same frame that we had before, but you're gonna start with, instead of an enjoyable read, you're starting with, this book was not for me. Because you have to remember, just because you didn't like it, doesn't mean it's a bad book forever for everyone. Just, bless you, just you didn't like it. So this book was not for me. And then the second part of that sentence still stands. It's a dog led, it's, it's set in dog led Antarctica in the 1890s. Now we're going for the book element, which is the main character. How did you react to the main character? It's too bossy for my taste. People who like dystopian stories is your group, your age group, your group, the first part of your third sentence. And then people who like dystopian stories might have better luck with this book. And that's the end of your third sentence. Does that make sense to people? Have I lost you? Everybody good? Yes. Okay, good. Any questions or any reviews ready to share? Not yet. Okay. We can leave this on for a couple of seconds. What we're gonna talk about next is adding on a little bit more. Now that you have the basics, now that you've got your three sentences down for whether you like the book or you didn't like the book, we're gonna add on to it if you feel like it. These are all optional. You've already written a great review, a review that will be helpful to other people, a review that reaps all of the rewards that we talked about before for both you and anyone who might be reading your review. All of that's already done with those three sentences. So now we're gonna move on to the optionals. Make it your own. Perhaps you think that giving a short recap of the story will further illustrate your review or a portion of your review. Are there other portions, are there portions of the a book that you liked <clears throat> that you didn't like, meaning 
if, if you liked a book overall, but there are portions of the book you didn't like, that's important to put in their review, perhaps for you. And also, did you prefer to add more personal details, more personal connections between your life and the book? So let's look at these in a little more depth. To recap or not to recap, the plot summary often is listed with the book. So if you're putting it on something like Amazon, like mentioned before, there's gonna be a plot summary that was provided by the author or by the publisher. So you don't have to write any recap at all. But if you feel like what you wrote in your review needs to have more of a recap, then certainly you should do that. A sentence, maybe two, but remember, no spoilers, please. Spoilers really do spoil. That's why they call them spoilers. Okay. Next option is a caution. This is the whole, you liked the book, but there are some things you didn't quite like about it. Good examples of that are, it's not for the faint of heart. It's got a bit of a slow start, but sort of hang in there because it's worth it. Um, or it has too much or not enough of some aspect of the story. It has too much romance and too much violence or not enough idleness. There's too much action. You didn't have the time to breathe. So those are other options for the caution portion if you decide to do that. And the third way is a personal connection. Did you connect with the story or the character on a personal level that you didn't get to express in the first three sentences or you didn't express enough in the first three sentences? So it's almost Halloween. This was the right book to get me in the spirit. Little pun there for you. Uh, it's been so cold here and I needed a good beach read. See that a lot in reviews. Or I've always loved dogs. And we're talking about dog about Antarctica here, so that's good. Another great way to make it a personal connection is compare it to a book that you've already read. And that can be helpful to someone who's already read that other book as well. Um, this is very common in, uh, in personal reviews, reviews that you read. You know, it reminded me of this other book that I read or people who, liked, who are fans of this book are gonna love this book. Um, it's a really good way to add some dimension to your already great, review. So if I were to add all three of these options, and you, you can add one, two, three, or zero of these options to your already great review. Um, oh wait, before I share mine, does anyone have any other reviews that they want to share? Any other sentences they wanted to put in the chat? No sentences, but there's been a little bit of um, comments about uh, some of the things you've talked about. So Michael says that he personally don't read the reviews for books. He worries it might cloud his judgment of the book as he's reading it. And then Holly agreed with Michael um, saying that she likes to wait until she's done reading the book and then she'll go back and read the reviews because it's interesting to see what other people thought. She compares it to a book club. Yeah, that's great. And that's building that book community that we talked about before. And a great way to participate in the community is to write your own review for yourself so you can keep straight in your mind what you thought about that book, particularly if you read a lot of books and you can get them crossed. Um, yeah, those are great points. A lot of people, same thing with movies. A lot of people don't read, the, don't watch the trailers. They don't read the reviews. And you can do that with books too. Just if it looks interesting to you or it's by an author that you enjoy, Absolutely, you don't have to read reviews. Writing reviews is very important for, <laughs> for a lot of reasons that we talked about. But yeah, that's a good point that if you don't want to read the review beforehand, that's perfectly valid. And then Cheryl says uh, she likes how you explain why you did. Let me read it exactly. I like how you explain why you didn't like the book, but imply that others who like it might like it. Um, it's respectful of the author. Thank you. And uh, I think that's important to be respectful of people who created the book because a lot of work goes into that. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> and John has written a review. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's wonderful. Reading the book Outliers, which presents a thought-provoking analysis of where greatness comes from. Examples are taken from recent history across multiple disciplines. 
a light, easy read, no math or formulas, and not too many pages. Great. <laughs> That was wonderful. That, that was wonderful. And then Karen asks, how would you write reviews of books like gardening books, cookbooks, guidebooks, et cetera? Well, the same, um, same principles apply. You know, it was informative. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was an informative or instructional um, journal, or it was instructional. You just say book if you want. Um, uh, about contemporary gardening or about, you know, gardening in an urban setting or whatever the specific niche was for the garden book. And then whatever elements of the book that you found most interesting, whether it was, it, you know, had a great narrative style or it had a lot of photographs that were helpful or it gave step-by-step -step instructions or it had different, um, instructions for different parts of the country or different parts of the world, all of those fit in the second sentence sort of framework. And then the third sentence is really great and simple for you. Gardener, gardeners will find this helpful. And there, there's your review. I hope that was, hope that answered her question. She said, perfect, thanks. And we have another review. Oh, yay! <laughs> so Annie just finished reading Trailed one woman's quest to solve the Shenandoah murders. And she says, a hair raising and true tale of murders in the Shenandoah in the mid 1990s with a thought provoking focus on the minority experience while hiking and camping in America's wilderness. Love it. That's great. That's really great. Oh my goodness. They're coming in, Janet. I'm loving this. This is amazing. <laughs> All right. So I have to, we, okay. So Raina says, uh, I have recently read The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Wow. I haven't read that since high school. Right? Um, a good book that takes place in the United States around the 1930s. The way that the landscapes have been written has kept me engaged. I recommend adults to read the book due to the content that are in the pages. That was wonderful. That was really, really wonderful. That was well put. And I totally agree. <laughs> and then Bo says, an intense transatlantic adventure set in the late 17th century. Readers of all ages would trek along with the teen heroine from the Scottish Highlands to the colonial Salem. The twist at the end will blow your mind. <laughs> Is this one of your books? <laughs> That's a little wicked. <laughs> I love it. I have the best husband ever. <laughs> the best. And that's it for now. That was okay, wonderful. Great. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for being brave enough to share your reviews. I, I'm so happy with the participation that we're getting tonight. This is wonderful. It's exactly more than I could have hoped for, honestly, really. Thank you. Um, all right, let's move on to, oh, you want to see my review with all three options. Here we go. An enjoyable read set in dogled Antarctica in the 1890s. The constant twists kept me turning pages. Families will be swept away by the descriptions. The dogled region is attacked by a rival force and must overcome new obstacles to survive. While it is a bit of a slow start, I love dogs, so I stuck with it, and I'm glad that I did. So you've got your caution in there, and you've got your personal connection, and a little bit of the plot, just a little bit so people know why we care about this dog-led Antarctica. I'm gonna to have to write this book now, you know that. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, any more questions, any more reviews to share before I move on? Okay, keep working. Keep yes, working. we have um, Abby uh, says, a riveting tale of the slow and arduous journey made by two intriguing characters to relocate two magnificent giraffes from New York Harbor to the San Diego Zoo in the 1930s. That's awesome. That is um, some of West Westwood giraffes, something like that. Yeah, awesome, great, perfect, nice job. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so 
ta-da, you've written a review. Congratulations, good job. Thumbs up, ready to go. So now, what are we gonna do with it? I believe we had this question before, yes? What are we gonna do with it? First thing we're gonna think about is social media. Putting it on social media, any of your social media that you have, you can actually post the review in social media with these three small sentences. You can fit it on Twitter, <laughs> or you can try anyway. Um, you can also write it into any of the other social media. You can make a cute little graphic with your review on it, or you can link back to, if you have your own website or if you have it on another site like Goodreads, you can link to it from your social media. Just remember to tag the author, um, hashtag the topic that it is. So for my books, you would hashtag Scotland, you would hashtag MG Lit, which is middle grade literature. Um, you would tag me because as the author, if I see it, I might respond, particularly if it's really nice. <laughs> and there are lots of authors, like big time authors who will respond on social media if they see a review that they find is particularly interesting to them. I'm also gonna ask that you tag your social media reviews with hashtag book review by you, because then all of us here tonight can do a search for that and we can see how we're all doing and how we have got our personal book reviews going and we can find each other on social media. So book review by you if, if you post on social media. Um, remember those other relevant hashtags. So where else can we share our reviews? If you have your own personal blog or website, then you have an audience built in if you're interested in that. And you can have fun creating your own system. You don't have to use stars. You can use one to five kitty faces or unicorns or cups of coffee, or you can use a scale of one to 10. You can do anything that you want as far as your own personal review rating system. And you have your own audience already built in. You can also, this one's a little shocking these days, that a person to person in person conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, just talking. Remember when we used to do that all the time? So the reason why you write it down first is so that those things are, are straight in your mind. And so when you're out doing whatever you're doing, you run into someone and, and they say, oh, what have you been doing lately? I just finished this great book. It's about dogled Antarctica in the 1890s. Families will love these sweeping descriptions. You have an idea of what you're gonna say when you're in person if you have written it down as soon as you finish the book or soon after you finish the book. You can also go to bookseller sites. We know, we know the big ones, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, but there are also many independent bookstores. They can't host their own because it's expensive to do so to host to the review sites. So they link back to indiebound.org, that's I-N-D-I-E-B-O-U-N-D.org or bookshop org, which is B-O-O-K-S-H-O-P.org. And you can post reviews there. And so people who go to those sites and to the sites that link to those sites can see those reviews. Um, does anybody have any other suggestions before I give you my final suggestion as to where, well, my final two suggestions? Okay. But there are things that are called book review sites. We know these as Goodreads. That's G-O-O-D-R-E-A-D-S dot com. And all that is, is um, book reviews, just book reviews. And they have these great functions built in where you can ask questions of the author, or they have these group chats where you have communities that you build around certain books or topics or whatever. Um, and so Goodreads is a great one. There's another one called library thing, which is also another one that's just about book reviews. It's just uh, people getting together to talk about books, leave your review, come back, read others, or don't. Um, whatever uh, the topic is, you can join the discussion. Uh, there's other great sites like that. Does anyone know of any more sites that they could share with us tonight other than Goodreads or library thing that are just 
strictly about reviewing without any kind of uh, sales attached to it? Cheryl says you can post the Goodreads and BookBub. Um, and then Annie asks, do many authors participate in Goodreads in particular? I have seen many authors. Goodreads had a um, managerial shift a year or so ago. Um, so things are a little bit different for authors on Goodreads now, but for the most part, um, authors will have will announce a time period where they will be answering questions. So they'll say, you know, go to Goodreads and drop me a question. I'm answering on Fridays. I'm answering this Friday, something like that. And then we go to Goodreads, you're dropping your question to them and they'll pick the ones that they want to answer. Great, thank you. And then Karen says, Pubby is another one, I think, P-U-B-B-Y. Oh, I don't know that one. Okay, great. I'll look that up. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, the last place that I can think of to share, please, to share reviews is libraries. Many libraries have their own system for reviewing books. And I believe our Fairfax County Library System has uh, one that's called Beanstack. And uh, take it away, Renee. Okay, so a few years ago, we um, purchased a software platform called Beanstack that we are using for our summer and winter reading programs. But the wonderful thing about Beanstack is that you can write reviews any time. You do not need to be participating in any type of challenge. I think that Beanstack works similarly to um, Goodreads, where you can use it as a way to just simply log and track your reading in addition to participating in any library challenges. So you can look at my account here. I am logged into Beanstack with my own personal account. You can see that even though the Adult Summer Reading Program Challenge is available, I am not enrolled in that challenge. I'm not participating. But it is still possible, as I said before, to write reviews. So there are two options, two pathways into writing a review. You can click on the tab at the top that says write a review, or you can click here on reviews. And if I click on reviews, then what, what you're going to see is you're going to see all the reviews that you've written in Beanstack. So you can see my very first book review that I've written <laughs> ever. Um, and it appeared on Beanstack in my written reviews um, column. So up here, if you look up here, you can see Renee's reviews. And then you can see another tab that says peer written reviews. If I click here, you're going to see all the reviews written by adults because I entered my age into Beanstack when I set up my account as 18 plus. So I'm only going to see the reviews written by people who are older, who are 18 and older. They're peer reviews because they have to be approved by library staff before they appear here for everyone to see. So if you click on reviews, like I said, there's another pathway to writing a review right here. So if you click on write a review, a form is going to open. And this is where you can write your review. So I stole a review from Amazon, don't tell, because I, I was a little lazy. So I'm gonna type in Murder of Crows. Beanstack is guessing at the book that I want and it is Murder of Crows by Anne Bishop. So let me copy the review that I stole from Amazon. And then you can simply write your review If you want to log this book in your personal Beanstack log, you have the option of doing so. You can add emoticons to really show how much you like the book. And then when you're ready, you just save it. You're gonna get a little pop-up that tells you your review has been saved. And then we can close this out. And if we go back to our reviews, our reviews tab, excuse me, 
and click on Renee's reviews, you're gonna see here the book review that I just wrote. So anything that you're writing in regards to book reviews will always appear, appear here. It's not gonna appear under peer written reviews until it has been approved by library staff. So that's a real easy way to write reviews, a real easy way for you to find new books based on the reviews written by others. So I'm going to turn it over to- Wait, Renee, hold on. Scroll Sean. down scroll down a couple of reviews. Yeah. Scroll down. Yeah, I wrote that one. Which one? Someday, someday, maybe. Oh, you wrote this one? Yeah. Oh, written by Janet M. That's me. <laughs> Did you follow your own advice? Of course I did. <laughs> Three sentences, this is perfect. This is wonderful. You know what it is, right? So there's also a friends tab so we can be friends. Yes, I have not played with that option yet. Well, we're, you and I are gonna work that out later. <laughs> <laughs> I experimented with a coworker, but it was just to show her, yes, we'll have to play later, okay. absolutely. All right, thank you, should I? Yes. Okay, so. Um, I think we have some questions in chat. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so Michael says, I've seen a lot of things automatically link to Goodreads, which makes it convenient. Yes, it does, yes. Goodreads is a great place to, to log for yourself. And then he also asks, can you see Beanstack reviews written by book or only by person or only by group? Uh, so to me, that means, can you like search the catalog and when you pull up a book that you might want to read, will everyone's reviews come through or does it not work that way? I think, I don't think you have the capability of searching. I think it's just a matter of scrolling through the reviews. Okay, great, wonderful. Okay. If anyone comes up with other ideas like Pubby that I didn't know about, please make sure you put that in the chat because I want to know all of them. Check them all out. Sounds good. Okay. So thank you for reviewing books. You really did make somebody's day, whether it's the author, whether it's yourself, whether it's somebody who reads it and now has a new book to read or a new book to share, which is great. Um, Continue to share in the chat. We still have a few minutes left if you want to. And if anyone has any questions or any reviews they want to share, they can do that. Uh, the next slide is, these are some reviews of my books. Um, some of them are excerpts from professional reviews and some of them are excerpts from personal reviews. So, well, <laughs> possibly my favorite um, one is the perfect version of Outlander, which tells you everything you need to know in one sentence, which is just fantastic. And of course, there's another author who wrote that. So <laughs> she's used to cutting back her work. Um, and if you want to get in touch with me, I am on all of these wonderful platforms, as well as Beanstalk. You can friend me on Beanstalk and we can figure that out together. Uh, there's my website. And, and just another reminder that if you do post on social media, make sure you use the hashtag book review by you so that all of us here can search for that and see it and see how we're all doing and encourage each other and see how brave we all are for doing this. <laughs> and uh, any other questions or any other shared uh, reviews would be great. Even if you just have one sentence that you want to be sharing, that's great. Um, and any questions, obviously. I'm ready to try to answer. <laughs> All right, so Holly has asked people to pop in to chat books that they're reading and enjoying because she's looking to add to her reading list. Great. And then John um, talks a little bit about, he, he found a number, number of articles um, that he reads in publications like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal that often cite books in the articles that address the topic of the article. Not a book review per se, but if you want more in-depth information on the topic, then go read these books. 
if you read the New York Times and other periodicals fairly regularly, you get to know the writers. Some offer excellent books, others not so much. Hmm. That's a, it's that's like cited good. works. Yeah, I've done that before where you'll read an article, they'll cite another book and then you'll look at that and then it takes you down this wonderful rabbit hole if it's a topic you really, really enjoy. Yeah, yes. that, that is a great source for finding uh, books to read. Yes. yes. Um, you got some thank yous. This template oh. is wonderful. Uh, this is from Cheryl. And then uh, and then they're sharing some books that they, they're reading. Oh, great. Yes. Keep sharing. We all need more books, right? Barbara... Thank you for the advice. I feel more confident writing a review of my nephew's book without si sounding like his aunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. And some sharing of other books that they're reading. Great. Great. Yes, I will. Um, I have the PDF or word form of the uh, template that I showed before, and we'll send that out to you so you have that. Um, also, this is this is being recorded, so you can always go back and watch it if you need to have a refresher. And there's always the Pinterest boards to look if you're looking for words. I also have three full lists to replace the word "great" on my Pinterest board, which um, you know there are a lot of great books, but they're also more specific than just great. <laughs> um, any other questions? You got some thank yous. And I love that Annie says that she's going to look your books up. And FCPL Libraries, y'all are amazing. Thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> I will second that. Yes. I will second that. All right. Janet, this has been, thank you for taking something that seems kind of complicated and cumbersome and, and, making it very simple. I'm glad that you think that. I'm glad that it came across that way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this was wonderful. Any last words before we say goodbye to our participants? Um, hashtag book review by you so I can follow along and see how you're doing. And um, thank you so much for your time tonight. We really appreciate you spending the, the hour with us. I hope that you got something useful out of it. Nice new, uh, a new, a new, um, a new experience and a new talent for your summer reading. <laughs>